significant means so many different things. For me, it's pride, you know, when you're being always criticized in the news and people have the different perceptions of who you are when you're African. To be able to represent Africa, there's so many things that you carry on your shoulders. So pride is one thing, love for my country, love for my continent, and just the belief that, you know, we're growing, we're going to get better, but what you see with me represents Africa, so I always stand up tall. Some of my greatest memories of growing up in Liberia is being with my family, the extended family, that village that raises you, the ones that when you come to America, sometimes that village dies. I miss that the most. Eating food straight from the earth and, and just being in a carefree environment where family comes first, no matter what. Passion for me started at an early young age. I'm um, 16, had a mentor, our teacher, that saw something in me that I didn't know what it was. And she mentored me and got me into design school. And it's it's something that's grown. I didn't just you know get born a designer. It's something I had to practice being. Something I had to really learn who I was as a designer, what my aesthetic was, and really practice the craft and, and learn who I was. And I think I've gotten there now. It's a journey, you know, but it's a fun journey. It's a fun, fabulous, funky journey. Definitely for me, my family and design. The love for all of it didn't come together. My parents are very against me doing anything artistic because as an African woman, our parents don't really support the arts. You know, you do a serious career, you're a doctor, you're a lawyer, you're a nurse, something that's attainable that you can get a paycheck every two weeks. So being a designer is something that came during the war. They saw my love for art and they actually saw my talent and that's when they became, you know, fans of what I do now. But it was a long journey. It was a lonely journey being an artistic African child. Definitely my inspiration comes from the places I've lived. I've lived in the United States, in Canada, in Africa, and I take from all those places. I love color, I love texture, and I love other you know, cultures as well. I love Asian inspirations. My collections always have an Asian inspiration in it. So I take from all that and I just create this gumbo that's me. Definitely Project Runway opened up a lot of doors for me. You go on a show like that, you finish in the top five, Amazing. I finished second, so it opened that door for people to know who I am internationally. It's not just something that's shown in America. Every month it goes to another continent. So it opened up a door that was once closed. Now when I show up, it's, you know, I can say Kato's here and they know who I am or they can call me to do things. Whereas before, it's like Kato, who will call you back? So definitely a great blessing and it's still riding four years strong. I think just in general, if you're um, of a darker skin tone like me, you naturally aren't just the norm in fashion. Like there aren't that many known great African American or even African fashion designers. So we're rare. And then right out the gate, you have to prove yourself more. You have to work harder and push harder to show that you're worthy of showing during fashion. You're worthy of being called a designer and um, to be up there with the top dog. So I think I've pushed that and shown that you know I am worthy for the little spot that I do have. I've worked hard for it. I deserve it. I'm going to still keep pushing, you know, um, there's so many other people that want to come and design that look like me and they don't see their faces. So with me being in here, they can come and say now, well, she looks like me. She has my story. So if she did it, I can do it. Honestly, the image of Africa is different in so many eyes. The image of Africa to America is completely different from the image of Africa in Africa or in Europe, in Australia. So when you look at it in America, there's a lot of ignorance. You know, you see what you see on TV, and if that's all you see is what is fed to you on TV, then you're, that's all you're gonna get. But you can go beyond that and learn what Africa really is. There's such beauty there that if you were to go there, you wouldn't even think you were in Africa. I think if you go past that ignorance, open your eyes to so many things that we offer. Look at fashion. Every year, oh, there's the African trend, or there's this. Every single season, something's borrowed from something that we just do every day just because that's what we do. We're that fabulous. Check it out. <laughs> Going back to Liberia, definitely, I mean, it's home. You can live here forever in America, in Europe, wherever you live, but there's nothing like home. The place where everybody else is like you, the place where people understand when you do certain things, they just know that's what you do as a Liberian. It'd been 23 years, but it wasn't by choice. We're in exile, my family couldn't go back or we were gonna be murdered. So to be able to go back and be free and show, you know, the love that I have for my country, I always rep for Liberia. Every time I'm on the runway at the end, you'll see my L's thrown up because that's who I am, that's who I'll always be. So going back made it come full circle and I got to go back because of my love for fashion, because I am a designer, so you can't beat that.
I think going back to Liberia, we, we visited many different um, projects that are going on. Imani Liberia is helping women develop their trade for design and sewing, be able to fend for themselves, which is something that, you know, in African society is not known. Women don't run the family household, but now because so many women are single because of their husbands are taken in the war, they are the breadwinner. So showing them a trade that they can use to, to you know, provide for their family and I can be the one to do that, that's amazing for me because it's like I'm giving back because they're me. I could have been that one that didn't have the family with the money to be abroad for school when the war broke out. So that was me. So giving back to them to show them that even though I'm over here, I haven't forgotten about them and I can help them to come up. If you're African man or woman and you're trying to be a designer, I think once you have to know what you're getting into, you have to know your trade, you have to know your craft, know who you are so no one can ever tell you what you will be, what you should be, and know what you stand for. And you don't have to always be African as a designer as what it's supposed to be. Be who you are. You can be an African designer and make a tour pieces. You're still African. It's not going to change you just because you don't sew from traditional African fabric. Stand up for who you are and have a voice. Years from now, when I look at, back at my legacy, I would love for people to know that as a designer, I still supported other designers. As a woman in fashion, I definitely make sure I show up to all the African designers that I know personally to their shows to show the support, um, to give back to young people who want to do things and just never had that person who opened the door for them. And I know what it's like, because in design school, I was at the bottom of the list. I couldn't sew. I didn't really have that craft ready, but I had somebody that believed in me. And if it wasn't for that one person that believed in me and just told me, you know what, you might not be good right now, but if you keep practicing, you'll get there, I probably wouldn't be doing this interview right now. So it just takes that one voice to say, you know what, I don't know how you're gonna get to the moon and sell cupcakes, but I'll help you get there. That can make the difference between some chick that just wanted to design one day and just never did it, and the chick that you're talking to right now.